everyone, it's Madison Link, and I'm excited to do another Gym for STEM reading for us all from Rachel Ignowski's book, Women in Science. Let's go ahead and get started. Jocelyn Bell Burnell, astrophysicist. Jocelyn Bell Burnell was born in 1943 in Ireland. Education always came first in her home. When her secondary school wouldn't let girls into the science lab, her parents threw a fit until she was allowed in the class. Jocelyn got the best grades. Her undergraduate studies at the University of Glasgow were challenging. She was one of the very few women in the physics department. Every time she entered a science lecture, her male classmates would holler at her and make comments about her appearance. She learned to hold her head up high and hit the books. She graduated in 1965 with honors. She was accepted to the University of Cambridge's graduate program and finished her doctorate there in 1969. At Cambridge, she joined Antony Hewish's research team and helped build a large radio telescope. She was also in charge of in interpreting long, tedious printouts of radio transmissions coming from space. One night, around 2 a.m., she noticed a scruff on the readouts. It was radio waves pulsing from deep space. Her advisors thought this could be alien life signaling from across the sky. Joseph saw more scruff repeated in different places in the sky. This proved that it was not alien made, but a natural occurrence. These radio waves came from a type of small and dense star called a pulsar. This type of neutron, neutron star throws out beams of radiation like a lighthouse. Jocelyn Burnell's work helped her advisor, Hewish, to win a Nobel Prize and has been used to understand the life cycles of stars. She became one of the few female physics, physics professors in the UK. Jocelyn still researches stars and black holes. She wanted everyone to know that all elements come from exploding stars. So we are made of star stuff. So the writing around all the drawings say discover a new type of star, a pulsar, continues to study stars and black holes. Her research gave us a further understanding of the life cycle of stars and planets. If, you, if we assume we've arrived at absolute truth, we stop searching. We stopped developing. Joseph Bell Berna. Discovered pulsars at the age of 24. The pulsar signal was nicknamed LGM or Little Green Men. Had a childhood cat named Vostok after the first satellites. She was the president of the Royal Astronomical Society in 2002 to 2004. Her discovery was published in the science journal Nature. She advocates for more women in science. Salen Wu, particle physicist. Salen Wu was born in early 1940s during the Japanese occupation of Hong Kong. Although Salen Wu's mother was illiterate and uneducated, she did whatever it took to make sure that Salen Wu and her brother got a good education. Against her father's wishes, Salen Wu applied to 50 different colleges in America. She was accepted to Vassar College with a full scholarship in 1960. The school provided her with room, board, clothing, and books. She, gradu she graduated summa cum laude and was accepted into Harvard's master's program in physics, the only woman admitted that year in her field. After earning a PhD from Harvard, Salen Wu started researching particle physics, the study of matter and how it works, at MIT, DESY, and the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Atoms are made out of protons and neutrons, which are made out of quarks. Salen Wu was fascinated by these particles and has dedicated her life to discovering their secrets. With a research team led by Samuel Ting, Salen Wu helped to discover the charm quark a type of elementary particle in 1974. After that first achievement, she became the lead on a research team that discovered the gluon, a particle that holds the quarks together. One unanswered question in physics was how the tiny particles that make up an atom have mass. In 1964, a theory was created that mass depended on a subatomic particle named the Higgs boson, a unit 
of the Higgs field, which exists everywhere. The way particles interact with the field gives them more or less mass. To prove this theory, researchers face the difficult task of finding a Higgs boson. Salim Wu said, it looks like looking for a needle in a haystack the size of a football stadium. With a particle collider, with a particle collider, Wu led one of the teams working to find proof of these teeny tiny subatomic particles. In 2012, her team was instrumental in observing the Higgs boson. Salim Wu is one of the most important particle physicists in her field and has made many groundbreaking discoveries. She continues to teach and research what all the stuff in the universe is made of. Was a key scientist in the discovery of the Higgs boson. She was part of the team that discovered the charm core, made important contributions in the discovery of the gluon. I grew up with a strong determination to be financially independent of men. Salen Mu. The large Hadron Collider Particle Accelerator is 17 miles long, won the European Physical Society Prize for High Energy Physics in 1995, fell of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences. She has met her own personal goal to make at least three major discoveries. The Higgs boson is called God Particle. Summer school at the Brookhaven National Laboratory introduced her to particle physics. Her hero is her mother. A biography of Marie Curie inspired her to become a scientist. Elizabeth Blackburn, molecular biologist. Elizabeth Blackburn was born in 1948 in Tasmania, Australia. She played with any animal she could get her hands on. Tadpoles, jellyfish, rabbits, and chickens all became her playmates. Her love of animals led to her passion for biology. After Elizabeth completed her master's degree in Australia, she left her home to earn a PhD in the UK. At the University of Cambridge, she studied DNA sequences of bacteriophages for her dissertation. She was thrilled to be working with DNA, realizing it was the key to understanding how all life works. She went to America to continue pursuing research in her new favorite subject. In the 1970s, no one really knew what the end of chromosomes were like. Under the microscope, they just seemed like blurry bobs. Chromosomes are extremely important and exist in each of our cells. They're tightly wound DNA material that tells our cells what they're supposed to do in our body. Elizabeth wanted to fully understand how they worked. Elizabeth noticed that there was a special kind of DNA called telomeres at each end of the chromosomes that work as a protective cap. She discovered that telomeres are made of non-essential repeating segments of DNA that break off a little bit every time a cell divides, protecting the important information. When we get older, this protective cap wears out and our chromosomes become damaged. This loss of DNA information causes our cells to not work correctly or die, leading to diseases like cancer, organ failure, and Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's. Elizabeth wanted to understand what keeps our body's telomeres healthy. In 1984, with the help of her grad student, Carol Grudier, she co-discovered telom telomerase, an enzyme that builds telomeres to a healthy length. In 2009, Elizabeth was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine. Elizabeth Blackburn's research shows that keeping a healthy telomere length is directly responsible for living a long, healthy life. It is not a magical solution though. Too much telomerase leads to cancer and too little causes the effects of old age. Elizabeth described it as living on a knife's edge. She continues to study telomerase and telomeres, working to figure out the science behind longevity. Won the 2009 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine, furthered our understanding of human lifespan and chromosomes, Discover telomerase, the enzyme that rebuilds telomeres. Don't be afraid to ask people for help, and then feel free to ignore it. Elizabeth Blackburn. Exercise, sleep, low stress levels, and healthy diet are proven to keep telomeres healthy. Worked at Yale, UC San Francisco, and UC Berkeley. I'm proud scum.
worked with a protozoan called Tetrahymena to study telomeres, was the president of the American Society for Cell Biology in 1998, was in the 2007 publication of the Time 100, People, the People Who Shaped Our World in the Time Magazine. Elizabeth met Barbara McClintock, who told her to trust her own intuition. Katia Kraft, geologist and volcanologist. Katia Kraft was born in 1942 in France. She fell in love with volcanoes when she saw pictures of them. She studied geology at the University of Strasbourg, where she also met her husband and fellow volcano fanatic, Maurice Kraft. Katia started her career by taking gas samples of volcanoes, and she and Maurice would document volcanoes erupting by observing them in person. Volcanoes are unpredictable and dangerous, and many scientists were too afraid to observe eruptions in person, but not Maurice and Katia. Throughout the 1970s and 1980s, they documented the volcanoes. Katia would photograph them while Maurice captured them on video. Katia and Maurice's observations have led to a better understanding of volcanic eruptions. They took viscosity measurements and gas readings and collected mineral samples just feet away from erupting volcanoes. They documented how these eruptions affected the ecosystems. Together, they witnessed and documented new volcanoes being formed, the effect of acid rain, and dangerous, dangerous ash clouds. They even went on a raft into a lake of acid to get proper readings. Their photography and videos allowed them to work with local governments on safety procedures and, and evacuations. Some of their last videos were understanding volcanic hazards and reducing volcanic risks, but that didn't mean they stopped being daredevils. They continued to push the boundaries to get their observations going closer to the volcano and staying longer during an eruption. In 1991, their luck ran out and the volcano Mount Unzen and Japan took Katia and Maurice's lives, along with those of 41 other scientists and journalists, when the pyroclastic flow changed course. Katia died doing what she loved with the person she loved. For years, she studied volcanoes right at their edge. Her bravery and expertise have given us a greater understanding of volcanoes that will endure. Pioneered volcano nature photography started her own foundation for volcanology with her husband, Maurice Kraft, used observations to help governments develop volcano evacuation procedures. For me, the danger is not important. On volcanoes, I forget everything. Katia Kraft. The Kraft Medal is now given out to the exceptional volcanologist, wore a special helmet to protect her skull from falling rocks, made a documentary, The Volcano Watchers, for the PBS show, Nature. Katya and Maurice started their own volcano center in 1968. Together, the crafts wrote many books that funded their trips all over the world, was killed by a pyroclastic flow that changed direction. So I hope you enjoyed today's readings and learning about all of the amazing women in science. Um, and our next video will be the last one with individual stories and then we have one more that is the conclusion and a few facts that um, Rachel Ignofsky has gathered, gathered together about um, women being in STEM, the statistics of women being in STEM. So I hope to see you all again soon and I hope you enjoy today's story. Thank you.